Welcome back to Draw My Life. Today, we are doing something a little different. If you do not know, my name is Cortana. We put together a fun slash educational video. This is a more raw video than our prior videos. If you are a mommy, this video is for you. If you're not a parent, it's okay. There is something in this video for everybody. Our goal is to have at least one person leave the video knowing something about pregnancy that they may not have known before. If just one person walks away with a new piece of information, we've done our job. We're trying to make our videos entertaining and fun. So you can learn something and have a good time. Click the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Share the video with your family and friends. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Today, we are going to talk about all things pregnancy. We are going in depth, explaining everything one can expect when it's your turn. The pros. The cons. The signs and symptoms and everything in between. We'll cover the outside of the growing belly. We'll go inside as well, so you know what you can expect when you're expecting. Nothing will be off limits in this video. Disclaimer, everything you are about to see and hear in this video is non-fictional. Some of the material in this video is not suitable for small children. This is a PG-13 clip. Please be sensitive in the comments. Tell us your favorite parts. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below the video. Do you like educational videos like this one? Let us know and we'll make more of them. Tell us what and or who you'd like to see in our next video. Relax and enjoy the video. Okay, I think I rambled enough. Let's get started. I can't wait. Take notes if you need to. Okay. Here we go. Pregnancy, also known as gestation, is the time during which one or more offspring develops inside a woman. A multiple pregnancy involves more than one offspring, such as with twins. Pregnancy usually occurs by sexual intercourse, but can occur through assisted reproductive technology procedures. A pregnancy may end in a live birth, a spontaneous miscarriage, an induced abortion, or a stillbirth. Childbirth typically occurs around 40 weeks from the start of the last menstrual period, LMP. This is just over 9 months, gestational age, where each month averages 31 days. When using fertilization age it is about 38 weeks. An embryo is the developing offspring during the first 8 weeks following fertilization, 10 weeks gestational age, after which, the term fetus is used until birth. Signs and symptoms of early pregnancy may include missed periods, tender breasts, nausea and vomiting, hunger, and frequent urination. Pregnancy may be confirmed with a pregnancy test. Pregnancy is divided into three trimesters, each lasting for approximately three months. The first trimester includes conception, which is when the sperm fertilizes the egg. The fertilized egg then travels down the fallopian tube and attaches to the inside of the uterus, where it begins to form the embryo and placenta. During the first trimester, the possibility of miscarriage, natural death of embryo or fetus, is at its highest. Around the middle of the second trimester, movement of the fetus may be felt. At 28 weeks, more than 90% of babies can survive outside of the uterus if provided with high-quality medical care. Prenatal care improves pregnancy outcomes. Prenatal care may include taking extra folic acid, avoiding drugs, tobacco smoking, and alcohol, taking regular exercise, having blood tests, and regular physical examinations. Complications of pregnancy may include disorders of high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, iron deficiency anemia, and severe nausea and vomiting. In the ideal childbirth labor begins on its own when a woman is at term. Babies born before 37 weeks are preterm and at higher risk of health problems such as cerebral palsy. Babies born between weeks 37 and 39 are considered early term while those born between weeks 39 and 41 are considered full term. Babies born between weeks 41 and 42 weeks are considered late term while after 42 weeks they are considered post term. Delivery before 39 weeks by labor induction or cesarean section is not recommended unless required for other medical reasons. About 213 million pregnancies occurred in 2012, of which, 190 million, 89%, were in the developing world and 23 million, 11%, 
were in the developed world. The number of pregnancies in women aged between 15 and 44 is 133 per 1,000 women. About 10% to 15% of recognized pregnancies end in miscarriage. In 2016, complications of pregnancy resulted in 230,600 maternal deaths, down from 377,000 deaths in 1990. Common causes include bleeding, infections, hypertensive diseases of pregnancy, obstructed labor, miscarriage, abortion, or ectopic pregnancy. Globally, 44% of pregnancies are unplanned. Over half, 56%, of unplanned pregnancies are aborted. Among unintended pregnancies in the United States, 60% of the women used birth control to some extent during the month pregnancy occurred. Associated terms for pregnancy are gravid and paris. Gravidus and gravid come from the Latin word meaning heavy and a pregnant female is sometimes referred to as a gravida. Gravidity refers to the number of times that a female has been pregnant. Similarly, the term parity is used for the number of times that a female carries a pregnancy to a viable stage. Twins and other multiple births are counted as one pregnancy and birth. A woman who has never been pregnant is referred to as a nulla gravida. A woman who is, or has been only, pregnant for the first time is referred to as a prima gravida, and a woman in subsequent pregnancies as a multigravida or as multiparis. Therefore, during a second pregnancy a woman would be described as gravida 2, para 1, and upon live delivery as gravida 2, para 2. In progress pregnancies, abortions, miscarriages, and slash or stillbirths account for parity values being less than the gravida number. In the case of a multiple birth the gravida number and parity value are increased by one only. Women who have never carried a pregnancy achieving more than 20 weeks of gestation age are referred to as nulliparous. A pregnancy is considered term at 37 weeks of gestation. It is preterm if less than 37 weeks and postterm at or beyond 42 weeks of gestation. American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have recommended further division with early term 37 weeks up to 39 weeks, full term 39 weeks up to 41 weeks, and late term 41 weeks up to 42 weeks. The terms preterm and postterm have largely replaced earlier terms of premature and postmature. Preterm and postterm are defined above whereas premature and postmature have historical meaning and relate more to the infant's size and state of development rather than to the stage of pregnancy. The usual symptoms and discomforts of pregnancy do not significantly interfere with activities of daily living or pose a health threat to the mother or baby. However, pregnancy complications can cause other more severe symptoms, such as those associated with anemia. Common symptoms and discomforts of pregnancy include, tiredness morning sickness constipation pelvic girdle pain back pain Braxton Hicks contractions. Occasional, irregular, and often painless contractions that occur several times per day. Peripheral edema swelling of the lower limbs. Common complaint in advancing pregnancy. Can be caused by inferior vena cava syndrome resulting from compression of the inferior vena cava and pelvic veins by the uterus leading to increased hydrostatic pressure in lower extremities. Low blood pressure often caused by compression of both the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta, aortocaval compression syndrome. Increased urinary frequency. A common complaint, caused by increased intravascular volume, elevated glomerular filtration rate, and compression of the bladder by the expanding uterus. Urinary tract infection varicose veins. Common complaint caused by relaxation of the venous smooth muscle and increased intravascular pressure. Hemorrhoids, piles. Swollen veins at or inside the anal area. Caused by impaired venous return, straining associated with constipation, or increased intra-abdominal pressure in later pregnancy. Regurgitation, heartburn, and nausea. Stretch marks breast tenderness is common during the first trimester, and is more common in women who are pregnant at a young age. Melasma, also known as the mask of pregnancy, is a discoloration, most often of the face. It usually begins to fade several months after giving birth. The American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommend the following methods to calculate gestational age, directly calculating the days since the beginning of the last menstrual period. Early obstetric ultrasound, 
comparing the size of an embryo or fetus to that of a reference group of pregnancies of known gestational age, such as calculated from last menstrual periods, and using the mean gestational age of other embryos or fetuses of the same size. If the gestational age as calculated from an early ultrasound is contradictory to the one calculated directly from the last menstrual period, it is still the one from the early ultrasound that is used for the rest of the pregnancy. In case of in vitro fertilization, calculating days since oocyte retrieval or co-incubation and adding 14 days. Pregnancy is divided into three trimesters, each lasting for approximately three months. The exact length of each trimester can vary between sources. The first trimester begins with the start of gestational age as described above, that is, the beginning of week one, or zero weeks plus zero days of gestational age, GA. It ends at week 12, 11 weeks plus 6 days of GA, or end of week 14, 13 weeks plus 6 days of GA. The second trimester is defined as starting, between the beginning of week 13, 12 weeks plus 0 days of GA, and beginning of week 15, 14 weeks plus 0 days of GA. It ends at the end of week 27, 26 weeks plus 6 days of GA, or end of week 28, 27 weeks plus 6 days of GA. The third trimester is defined as starting, between the beginning of week 28, 27 weeks plus 0 days of GA, or beginning of week 29, 28 weeks plus 0 days of GA. It lasts until childbirth. Through an interplay of hormones that includes follicle-stimulating hormone that stimulates folliculogenesis and oogenesis creates a mature egg cell, the female gamete. Fertilization is the event where the egg cell fuses with the male gamete, spermatozoon. After the point of fertilization, the fused product of the female and male gamete is referred to as a zygote or fertilized egg. The fusion of female and male gametes usually occurs following the act of sexual intercourse. Pregnancy rates for sexual intercourse are highest during the menstrual cycle time from some five days before until one to two days after ovulation. Fertilization can also occur by assisted reproductive technology such as artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization. Fertilization, conception, is sometimes used as the initiation of pregnancy, with the derived age being termed fertilization age. Fertilization usually occurs about two weeks before the next expected menstrual period. A third point in time is also considered by some people to be the true beginning of a pregnancy, this is time of implantation, when the future fetus attaches to the lining of the uterus. This is about a week to 10 days after fertilization. The sperm and the egg cell, which has been released from one of the female's two ovaries, unite in one of the two fallopian tubes. The fertilized egg, known as a zygote, then moves toward the uterus, a journey that can take up to a week to complete. Cell Division begins approximately 24 to 36 hours after the female and male cells unite. Cell division continues at a rapid rate and the cells then develop into what is known as a blastocyst. The blastocyst arrives at the uterus and attaches to the uterine wall, a process known as implantation. The development of the mass of cells that will become the infant is called embryogenesis during the first approximately 10 weeks of gestation. During this time, cells begin to differentiate into the various body systems. The basic outlines of the organ, body, and nervous systems are established. By the end of the embryonic stage, the beginnings of features such as fingers, eyes, mouth, and ears become visible. Also during this time, there is development of structures important to the support of the embryo, including the placenta and umbilical cord. The placenta connects the developing embryo to the uterine wall to allow nutrient uptake, waste elimination, and gas exchange via the mother's blood supply. The umbilical cord is the connecting cord from the embryo or fetus to the placenta. After about 10 weeks of gestational age, which is the same as 8 weeks after conception, the embryo becomes known as a fetus. At the beginning of the fetal stage, the risk of miscarriage decreases sharply. At this stage, a fetus is about 30 millimeters, 1.2 inches, in length, the heartbeat is seen via ultrasound, and the fetus makes involuntary motions. During continued fetal development, the early body systems, and structures that were established in the embryonic stage continue to develop. Sex organs begin to appear during the third month of gestation. The fetus continues to grow in both weight and length, 
although the majority of the physical growth occurs in the last weeks of pregnancy. Electrical brain activity is first detected between the fifth and sixth week of gestation. It is considered primitive neural activity rather than the beginning of conscious thought. Synapses begin forming at 17 weeks, and begin to multiply quickly at week 28 until 3 to 4 months after birth. Although the fetus begins to move during the first trimester, it is not until the second trimester that movement, known as quickening, can be felt. This typically happens in the fourth month, more specifically in the 20th to 21st week, or by the 19th week if the woman has been pregnant before. It is common for some women not to feel the fetus move until much later. During the second trimester, most women begin to wear maternity clothes. During pregnancy, a woman undergoes many physiological changes, which are entirely normal, including behavioral, cardiovascular, hematologic, metabolic, renal, and respiratory changes. Increases in blood sugar, breathing, and cardiac output are all required. Levels of progesterone and estrogens rise continually throughout pregnancy, suppressing the hypothalamic axis and therefore also the menstrual cycle. A full-term pregnancy at an early age reduces the risk of breast, ovarian and endometrial cancer and the risk declines further with each additional full-term pregnancy. The fetus is genetically different from its mother, and can be viewed as an unusually successful allograft. The main reason for this success is increased immune tolerance during pregnancy. Immune tolerance is the concept that the body is able to not mount an immune system response against certain triggers. During the first trimester, minute ventilation increases by 40%. The womb will grow to the size of a lemon by 8 weeks. Many symptoms and discomforts of pregnancy like nausea and tender breasts appear in the first trimester. During the second trimester, most women feel more energized, and begin to put on weight as the symptoms of morning sickness subside and eventually fade away. The uterus, the muscular organ that holds the developing fetus, can expand up to 20 times its normal size during pregnancy. Final weight gain takes place during the third trimester, which is the most weight gain throughout the pregnancy. The woman's abdomen will transform in shape as it drops due to the fetus turning in a downward position ready for birth. During the second trimester, the woman's abdomen would have been upright, whereas in the third trimester it will drop down low. The fetus moves regularly, and is felt by the woman. Fetal movement can become strong and be disruptive to the woman. The woman's navel will sometimes become convex, popping out, due to the expanding abdomen. Head engagement, where the fetal head descends into cephalic presentation, relieves pressure on the upper abdomen with renewed ease in breathing. It also severely reduces bladder capacity, and increases pressure on the pelvic floor and the rectum. It is also during the third trimester that maternal activity and sleeve positions may affect fetal development due to restricted blood flow. For instance, the enlarged uterus may impede blood flow by compressing the vena cava when lying flat, which is relieved by lying on the left side. Childbirth, referred to as labor and delivery in the medical field, is the process whereby an infant is born. A woman is considered to be in labor when she begins experiencing regular uterine contractions, accompanied by changes of her cervix, primarily effacement and dilation. While childbirth is widely experienced as painful, some women do report painless labors, while others find that concentrating on the birth helps to quicken labor and lessen the sensations. Most births are successful vaginal births, but sometimes complications arise and a woman may undergo a cesarean section. During the time immediately after birth, both the mother and the baby are hormonally cued to bond, the mother through the release of oxytocin, a hormone also released during breastfeeding. Studies show that skin-to-skin -skin contact between a mother and her newborn immediately after birth is beneficial for both the mother and baby. A review done by the World Health Organization found that skin-to-skin -skin contact between mothers and babies after birth reduces crying, improves mother-infant interaction, and helps mothers to breastfeed successfully. They recommend that neonates be allowed to bond with the mother during their first two hours after birth, the period that they tend to be more alert than in the following hours of early life. In the ideal childbirth labor begins on its own when a woman is at term. Events before completion of 37 weeks are considered preterm. Preterm birth is associated with a range of complications and should be avoided if possible. 
Sometimes if a woman's water breaks or she has contractions before 39 weeks, birth is unavoidable. However, spontaneous birth after 37 weeks is considered term and is not associated with the same risks of a preterm birth. Planned birth before 39 weeks by cesarean section or labor induction, although at term, results in an increased risk of complications. This is from factors including underdeveloped lungs of newborns, infection due to underdeveloped immune system, feeding problems due to underdeveloped brain, and jaundice from underdeveloped liver. Babies born between 39 and 41 weeks gestation have better outcomes than babies born either before or after this range. This special time period is called full term. Whenever possible, waiting for labor to begin on its own in this time period is best for the health of the mother and baby. The decision to perform an induction must be made after weighing the risks and benefits, but is safer after 39 weeks. Events after 42 weeks are considered post-term. When a pregnancy exceeds 42 weeks, the risk of complications for both the woman and the fetus increases significantly. Therefore, in an otherwise uncomplicated pregnancy, obstetricians usually prefer to induce labor at some stage between 41 and 42 weeks. The postnatal period, also referred to as the purpurium, begins immediately after delivery and extends for about six weeks. During this period, the mother's body begins the return to pre-pregnancy conditions that includes changes in hormone levels and uterus size. Most pregnant women experience a number of symptoms, which can signify pregnancy. A number of early medical signs are associated with pregnancy. These signs include the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, in the blood and urine mist menstrual period implantation bleeding that occurs at implantation of the embryo in the uterus during the third or fourth week after last menstrual period increased basal body temperature sustained for over two weeks after ovulation Chadwick's sign, darkening of the cervix, vagina, and vulva, Goodell's sign, softening of the vaginal portion of the cervix, Hagar's sign, softening of the uterus. Isthmus, pigmentation of the linea alba, linea nigra, darkening of the skin in a midline of the abdomen, caused by hyperpigmentation resulting from hormonal changes, usually appearing around the middle of pregnancy. Darkening of the nipples and areolas due to an increase in hormones. Most women can continue to engage in sexual activity throughout pregnancy. Most research suggests that during pregnancy both sexual desire and frequency of sexual relations decrease. In context of this overall decrease in desire, some studies indicate a second trimester increase, preceding a decrease during the third trimester. Sex during pregnancy is a low-risk behavior except when the health care provider advises that sexual intercourse be avoided for particular medical reasons. For a healthy pregnant woman, there is no single safe or right way to have sex during pregnancy. Pregnancy alters the vaginal flora with a reduction in microscopic species genus diversity. The amount of healthy weight gain during a pregnancy varies. Weight gain is related to the weight of the baby, the placenta, extra circulatory fluid, larger tissues, and fat and protein stores. Most needed weight gain occurs later in pregnancy. The Institute of Medicine recommends an overall pregnancy weight gain for those of normal weight, body mass index of 18.5. 24.9, of 11.3, 15.9 kg, 25, 35 pounds, having a singleton pregnancy. Women who are underweight, BMI of less than 18.5, should gain between 12.7, 18 kg, 28, 40 lb, while those who are overweight, BMI of 25, 29.9, are advised to gain between 6.8, 11.3 kg, 15, 25 lb, and those who are obese, BMI 30, should gain between 5, 9 kg, 11, 20 lb. 111 These values reference the expectations for a term pregnancy. During pregnancy, insufficient or excessive weight gain can compromise the health of the mother and fetus. The most effective intervention for weight gain in underweight women is not clear. Being or becoming overweight in pregnancy increases the risk of complications for mother and fetus, including caesarean section, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, macrosomia and shoulder dystocia. Excessive weight gain can make losing weight after the pregnancy difficult. Some of these complications are risk factors for stroke. 
Around 50% of women of childbearing age in developed countries like the United Kingdom are overweight or obese before pregnancy. Diet modification is the most effective way to reduce weight gain and associated risks in pregnancy. Tell us your thoughts in the comments.